back everyone. Time for a, a rigging video. This one was requested by a gentleman who wanted to, wanted to know a couple of good live bait rigs for off the shore. As he told me the poor bugger can't go out in the boats, he gets violently, violently seasick. And we'd like to chase some big fishing from land, land base, and just wanted to know some good live bait rigs. So what I've done here guys, I've made up, I've got, I've got them down here, I've made up three different rigs. Okay, only a couple of different rigs. Stick around to the last one, the last one's gonna surprise you. You're probably gonna look at me with your head on the side thinking what the hell is this guy smoking? But trust me, it does work and it works really well. But that one's last. What we'll do, we'll just get into it. The first one here is back to basics, okay? So for live baiting off the shore, actually I've something else I need to talk to as well. But live baiting off the shore, just get back to basics. First one you're gonna have, it's your good old running sinker rig. Okay, so you've got your hook there, you've got about a you know, foot and a half or two foot. I'd go a bit shorter, seeing as you're casting from the land. When you're casting from the land, big long rigs and stuff are very hard to cast, very awkward. So if you go a shorter, a little bit shorter trace, it's only for teeth, for your raspy teeth and gills. Okay, it's just a little bit shorter than a leader, but especially for bigger bait and a live bait, your cast will be better. Don't go big long leaders, go about a foot or so, a bit foot and a half max, better casting. But what we've got here is just back to the basics, running sinker rig, so hook, leader, swivel here, and the sinker. The sinker is determined, that's going to be on the size of the bait you're running, how heavy your outfit is, how far you need to cast, that's something you're going to have to make up on, you know, doing your mind on the fly. Okay, so sinker, swivel, about a foot and a half, I'd go a little bit shorter than that one, down to probably about there. Make it nice and short, the shorter it is, the easier it is to cast. With a decent bait. Okay, and so you're like a 5.0, 6.0, 7 hook, depending on what fish you're chasing and how big your live bait is. Max your hook to your live bait. Okay, even a 4.0 will land a 30 kilo dewy. It just, you want to match your bait to your, your hook to your live bait. Okay, so just keep that in mind too. Don't think about the fish, fish the size of the mouth, think about the bait. Match it to your bait. Okay, so that's the first one. And before we go with the, uh, on with the other couple, I will talk about, I will say, we've got snell hooks there, okay? So depending on where you're fishing and what you're chasing, how you fish, you're either gonna run a single hook or you're gonna run snell hooks, two hooks. And the main difference is, okay, when I'm running snell hooks, I'm, if I'm running snell hooks with live bait, from a shore, from a boat, no matter where I'm fishing, if I'm running snell hooks, it's usually because I'm fishing in current. And quite a lot of current. With your snell hooks, what you can do is your top hook there, you can put through the nose of the fish, your back hook just lightly pierce down near his tail, okay? And that way when he's in the water, he'll sit that way and he'll have his nose into the current and he'll swim quite happily in the current. Okay? With your snell hooks. When you're running a single hook, most people put this like under their dorsal fin or in the back of the fish, which is all good in very, very light current or no current at all, okay? Which is good, but in current, all that's gonna do is you'll hook your live bait halfway down under your dorsal, under his dorsal fin. He's gonna be on the bottom. That's gonna, he's gonna pull up like so with the current and he's gonna be on his side, just flapping on his side. And after a while, he will actually tire out and you'll die. And then all he's gonna do is spin, spin, spin in the current. You don't want that. So when, if you're fishing heavy current, run, run um, snell hooks, okay? Just so you can hook them through the nose. You can hook them through the nose too. Don't get me wrong, you can hook them through the nose just with a single hook and have them swimming. That's fine. But you're gonna miss, you're probably gonna miss a few strikes, okay? You're better off with a snell hook and you know, put one down near the tail. It's not every fish, okay? It's gonna grab them from the tail first. Some go head first, some swallow them whole, they all hit differently. Generally just two hooks, you know, slightly better chance. Okay? So there's your first, first rig, running sinker rig. Very easy. The second one I'm going to talk about is the one I grew up with down in Victoria, how I got taught how to tie, with chasing jewfish from the beach and jetties. And it's a very su successful rig. Okay. And you can use it out of the surf. This one's a bit big, so I didn't have a sinker right size. But... What we're going to do here is the same deal. Now, can you see that? So we've got our hook, okay? 
That's like a 5 -0. You can run snell hooks depending current or not. Same deal. You're going to run, run this a little bit shorter, so about a foot and a half or so. This is just a quick mock-up. And then you've got a swivel at the top here, okay? Swivel, and then line up to your main line. But the difference one here, here is, I've got a swivel here, okay? So we've got the swivel there between the main line and, uh, and the leader. But there's also, I'll put a swivel on the main line here, and that one slides, can slide, okay? And from that one, I've got a break of what we'll call a breakaway line. There's a 10 pound, usually a 10 or a 15 pound line, probably about a 10, down to a sinker, okay? And this is what we used to use down in Victoria, chasing jewfish. I grew up using this rig off jetties, catching big jewies, like 30 pound, 40 pound jewfish, okay? Even in the surf, it works really well. So basically, it's just that sort of rig. It's like a, sort of like a, I can't remember the name now. Anyway. Anyway, um, it's a sliding rig, it's a sliding sinker rig. So, once again, we've got our leader to our hook up here. We've got a swivel to the main line, but we put a small swivel on the main line and that's going to slide. That can slide. So there's no resistance to the fish. The fish picks this up. He swims away. He's not going to be dragging a sinker along with him. He's not going to feel any resistance until you want him to. Okay? And the whole idea is with the breakaway is if you're chasing big fish from the shore and you're fishing some heavy structure or you know there's some reef around or something around, the fish might wrap, go fast. If your sinker gets caught up on that with a 10 pound leader, that breaks away. You might lose a sinker, but you're going to hopefully land a good fish. So that's that's a breakaway one. Okay? That's a really good rig. That's, I grew up using that rig. That rig works exceptionally well off jetties and, and in the surf. Just downgrade the sinker. That sinker there I've got is huge. And a little bit shorter leader, shorter breakaway, just for easier casting. Okay, now down to the one where you're all going to turn your heads at me and thinking, what the hell is this guy doing or smoking? You've seen me use this rig time and time again. I use it for offshore for everything, but what people don't realise, it works really well fishing from the shore, especially in the surf, if you want to go surf fishing with live baits. Two reasons, it casts exceptionally well, because you haven't got a lot of leader and stuff. So the bait and sink is right on the end. They cast really well. And when you cast it out, you let a bit of line go, the bait will swim away from the sinker, sinker will stay there. Free swimming, and there's no resistance when a fish picks it up. It looks doesn't look like a surf fishing rig, but it works well. And most guys don't use it, I'm not sure why. And you probably all know what I'm talking about now, because you see me use it pretty much every time I go fishing. And all it is, Snelled hook rigs, okay, snelled hook, little green bead, sinker on the top. That's it. I know you're looking at me sideways thinking, what the hell, but it works really well. Okay. Once again, you can use a single hook with this, but I prefer um, snelled just with this rig. Nosy a live bait at the top, bottom one through the tail, and when you cast, there's nothing, there's no resistance there. This is straight off the tip. You can cast this quite a long way. And when it's out, you just let a little bit of slack line go. Okay, you'll live your drift away from your sinker. Swim freely, he's all happy, no resistance there. And that rig works well. Especially if you make this leader, the actual leader, like I have the snow of hooks, and I usually run about three to four meters up to like an FG knot, something nice and thin to go through the guides. And there's a lot of room for this sinker to go away from the live bait, the live bait is from around and play with. And a bit of bit of line there to play with if the fish picks it up and runs, he's not going to feel resistance for a little while. Okay? So a three or four meter mono leader to like an FG knot or something thin. Okay? And just two hooks. Little green bead, and the reason I put the bead there, I've told people time and time again. Okay? It stops the ting, I believe it stops the tinging sound. So when a sink is bashing or banging, um, you can't hear it. The sink is hitting the rubber, the rubber's hitting the hook. It's not lead hitting the steel, no noise. And also a bit of lumo, so a little bit of fish attracted. Or so it's meant to be. Okay. And all that. And also sinker hitting the hook as well. I think it sends vibrations through the hook as well. So it doesn't do your live bait a lot of good either. Just put a little bead there. It does a variety of things. Helps your live bait, stops noise, and attracts eventually. So that's the main rig, not the main rig, but that's a good rig for off the shore. Okay. 
for casting from the shore, not off the shore. I use this out on the reefs all the time, as you know, but it works well casting from the beach. You can cast a long way with this rig. It's easy to use and it works really well. Okay? So before you all laugh at me and say, hey, what the hell are you talking about? Give it a crack. Go ahead, give it a try. Okay? So that's just the three main rigs I would run if I'm going back to land-based. Um, quick and easy, works really well. I've used this a lot chasing like jew fish and gummies and stuff down south and bigger fish. The one of the breakaway sink I used to use in river, river mouths and off piers. They used to work really well, especially down to the south, once again chasing jewies. And the first one, that's just a ba ba back to basic running sinker rig. That rig will catch pretty much everything. It's very simple to make, use and it catches everything. It really does. All you've got to do is up and upgrade and downgrade the hooks, the sinkers, swivels and the leader. And you go from catching water and brim on that rig, up to catching kingfish and cobia and jewfish, snapper and you know, you name it, everything. Okay? So there's the three rigs. And just remember, depending if you're fishing in current or not current, if you're not fishing, if you're fishing very light current or no current, single hook's fine. If you're fishing current, use smell hooks, two hooks, just so you can pierce one through the nose so the fish will sit into the current and swim, he won't die on you, not straight away, it'll take a long time. Okay? Uh, I hope that video helps. I think I've rammed on enough. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys shortly for another video.